The Dell XPS 17 is pretty unique in the laptop world. It's got the same size display as other big laptops, but the rest of the body, well, it's actually quite small comparatively. I've been using mine for the past week, so how has it held up after several rounds through my video production pipeline? Let's find out. I like it too much to slam it down, I'm sorry. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Spoilers, okay. Spoilers for the rest of the video. I actually really, really like the XPS 17, which that surprises me because as somebody that really loves getting as small a laptop as possible, I mean, if you had to ask me what my favorite laptop design of all time is, it's probably the MacBook Pro 13. I really thought that the much bigger size of the 9700 would seriously turn me off to this computer. But surprisingly enough, and most of all to me, I'm actually really enjoying this as both they work around different spots of my house, simulating actually going places because I can't go anywhere. I work from home now and I'm trapped in my house, but I'm also really getting comfortable plugging this into my dock and external monitor to get more of a desktop -y feel out of this. This video is not going to be a list of tech specs or benchmarks. If you would like to see a little bit more in-depth coverage, I'll leave a link to my playlist that covers a lot about the XPS 17, including comparisons against its main rivals, the MacBook Pro 16 and the XPS PS15, I'll leave that playlist linked in the description below. What we're gonna do today is go over what I both really like and what I both dislike after using this as my main computer for the past week. And you know what? Let's start off with the negatives. I find, I find starting off negative grounds us all in reality before I go super hyperbolic, like Goku levels of hyperbolicness um, about the things that I like. I'm a, I'm a nerd. First off, and this is a new thing for me to really talk about, let's talk about Dell's quality control. This does involve a lot of computers and not just the XPS 17, but the XPS 17 is the first time I've personally had an occurrence or a run-in with one of those problems. This laptop shipped to me with two physical problems. One, the trackpad. I don't know if you can hear this. But the trackpad's kind of loose. It's kind of loose and it has a lot of inconsistencies when clicking or just trying to scroll around on it. And that is an issue that I've read about in the 15s, even though my personal 15 doesn't have that problem and is fine. The second issue I've had is there is a small dent. Can you see it? Can you, right there. Yep, right there. There's a small dent in the underside grill of the laptop that we found in the unboxing video. So I haven't had a chance to cause that issue, which I might because I do drop stuff all the time. Now for me, the dent on the grill is not that big of a deal because I'll never actually see it. It's on the bottom of the computer. And I haven't yet had a performance problem indicating maybe it was dropped or something violent happened to it in its shipment to me. The trackpad though is a big deal and I will be returning this specific 17 to get another one that will hopefully not have this issue. And that is something you need to consider when you buy your stuff. This is much like I've mentioned in previous videos. If you're going to buy any kind of expensive creation gear, whether it be camera, computer, lens, anything, buy it from a website slash vendor with a reputable return policy in case you have these issues. And really quickly, as I'm working through the return policy, on this 17 inch model, I'm getting a weird pushback from Dell when I submitted for my return. Now, what I wanna do, this is kinda of gonna be like a rolling update as I go through the process. I will update the video description next week. So if they send me any more runaround emails like the one I got today, instead of just providing me a return label, I will let you know. Hey, really quickly, I'm editing the video over in the office and I set all the stuff up really quickly. So I did get an update on the return policy. So after I recorded shut down, I got an email from Dell where I got the initial email that said, hey, there's a technical issue, please work with our technical team. I responded to that email with, no, I don't want your technical support, please just send me a shipping label. Then an hour later, I did receive that label. So there you go always check. Now what is frustrating in that process is other retailers just give you the return form. I want to return an Apple computer, I submit for the return, it immediately shows up. They don't give me a runaround. They don't make me go through technical support first. Another thing that I don't really like, but is also kind of fixed, it's a we I don't like it, it's also not a problem. It's weird to explain. If you try to buy this laptop from the home side of Dell's website, you can't get the version with the RTX 2060 and the 1080p panel. You only have the option of the 4K touchscreen, which sucks because I don't necessarily want to pay for that battery drain and touchscreen of a resolution that I'm not gonna use. I don't wanna pay for stuff like that because I don't want it. And it kind of sucks that that's your only option. But if you go over to the business side of the house, you can find that exact model, 2060, 1080p. So don't play coy with a Zell. Move that over to both product lines make them equivalent. Next thing that I don't like has to do with the physical design of the laptop. And the physical design will be a positive later, so just, just stick with me, this could get awkward. You'll no doubt know that I'm a discerning typist. I'm pretty tough on my needs for typing, whether it's a computer or a word processing tool that I use. 
The XPS 17 has a fine keyboard that we'll talk about more in a little bit, but this edge right here, this edge of the laptop body is actually kind of sharp. I mean, not like cut yourself sharp or shave with sharp dad jokes, but it's sharp enough and the body is just a little bit bigger than the 15. It's just big enough to be uncomfortable to type on. It's too big to like align your hands in any way to miss this edge. And at least for me, you know, if you have bigger hands or longer arms, I don't know, it, it, physically for you it might be different, but the way that I lay my arms down, the way my forearms lay on this palm rest, it becomes very uncomfortable after a few minutes of typing. Now with how soft the actual keyboard is, like with how good this carbon fiber is, I wish they'd kind of kept that aesthetic or design choice and made the edges a little more rounded. Like if the laptop's gonna give me a mark on my arm after typing for just a couple of minutes, probably not the best way to go to make people want to type. And as somebody that's always typing, I do. Dell, I want to type. Please, I want to type. Make this a little more comfortable. And the last main thing that I don't like about the XPS 17 is about Dell's audio software enhancements that they include standard. It's just weird. Like, I, why do it? It gives a lot of weird snaps and pops when playing games. Now, I don't have an issue when I'm watching YouTube videos or even editing these videos. But I did want to play some video games and I started working towards my seventh playthrough of Portal 2? Man, I've played that game a lot. The audio was just bad. You uninstall those enhancements as soon as you can. You may not be using this for video gaming, but you could if you wanted to. Okay, blah, blah, that's, not, that's enough about the negatives. They are important because nothing in this world is perfect because I prefer to dwell on positives because darn it, technology today is really, really good. And the first major thing that I like about the XPS 17 is the performance. The performance on hand is fantastic. Everything is quick snappy, responsive, all sorts of descriptors that I could continue combing through a thesaurus to find, but I won't. It's fast. Not only is it fast for daily tasks like web browsing stuff, but I find video editing to be an actual really good experience without any caveats. I don't have, it's not like it's good, but it's just good. Now I personally bought the version with the 1650 Ti and while it's not my preferred graphics card, it does a fantastic job in both photo and video editing. And that's what I use my computers for. And when I say fantastic, this did. This, even though it does not have the specs to stand up to my MacBook Pro 16, it did much better than my MacBook Pro in the same tasks. Now, I don't have any numbers to back this up, but I used Photoshop and Premiere Pro to do work on the past few videos, and both programs were far smoother on the 17. And when it comes to video editing, not only was the editing, coloring, and audio processing faster, but the render itself was darn near twice as fast as doing the same thing in Premiere on my MacBook. I mean, it it was good. And when comparing Final Cut Pro X, it was still faster to render in Premiere on the XPS. That's, that's real impressive. As I've long considered Final Cut Pro on the Mac to be the default speedy video renderer, especially if you're looking for a laptop. I mean, desktops, sure. You can have way beefier components and cooling systems there. I thought laptops were Mac's domain. And I'm just seeing that my table's busted. On that performance note, I really like the vapor chamber cooling system. I don't think it's specific or unique to the XPS 17, but it works really, really darn well. And it's part of the reason that this laptop can be so small and yet have really good thermal performance. During my quick bouts of gameplay and my several hours of video editing, I never once got into thermal trouble with this machine. Temperatures were very consistent throughout my, the entire time I've used this laptop, temperatures have been consistent. They never come close to thermal throttling. And though the fans would turn on during rendering and after editing for a while, they never really sounded like jet engines. I mean, they didn't go like full power, um, unless I set the computer into Dell's performance mode, which does max out the fans. Or when I attempted to play back some H.265 files from a Canon 1DX3, this laptop did not play well with that. Learn if you're gonna use this, with high-end codecs like that, learn to create proxies, people. I don't know who originally came up with this cooling system, but honestly, I want it in every laptop I buy from now on. If I'm buying a laptop and I have an option to get a vapor chamber in it, I will pick that laptop. This XPS is so much better thermally than my 15 inch, and my 15 inch has a weaker and smaller core count CPU. The next thing that I like about the XPS 17 is the size. And much like I said in the beginning, I thought the size of this computer was going to be too much. Way back in the day, what, like 2006, 2007, I had a 17 inch Dell laptop and it was basically, it was like permanently bolted to my table and my desk because it was way too big and way too heavy to actually take anywhere. But this 
is actually like a 15 inch laptop that just so happens to have a 17 inch screen and 17 inch internals. And it's not gonna click for you. It's, watching this video, it's not gonna click for you until you can go out and get it in your hand and try it out. When you see it on a website by itself or in a YouTube video, that does not do it justice and it does not get across just how small of a big laptop this is. And a lot of that has to do with the display. And as we're talking about display, I continue, I continue to love the display on this laptop. Much like the 15 inch, this new panel is crazy. Like it's legitimately incredible. And one of the best things Dell's done here by far. Almost no bezels while still fitting in a webcam, albeit not a great webcam, but a webcam nonetheless. This is really impressive stuff. It's just one of many little nice engineering touches that add up to an overall great laptop experience. Another really great engineering touch that I like, which we talked about earlier, is the carbon fiber build of this body itself. It looks great and it just feels great when you're typing or you're messing around with the body of this laptop. You might think that's weird, like who cares what the laptop feels like? It's all about performance and price. But for me at least, it's all the little things that add up that I get impressed with. And I would prefer a computer to feel better and higher quality than for it to not feel that way. So. I appreciate this. I also really like the port selections here. As somebody that does a lot of work that gets both saved to SSDs and SD cards, having four Thunderbolt 3 ports and an SD card slot built into the body of this laptop is exactly what I need. That is, again, much like the vapor chamber, I need every computer I use from now on to have this. My display is connected through Thunderbolt 3. I have the power cable ready to go. It's all right on my desk, just ready to go without any muss or fuss. It's also really nice that if you do need USB-A or HDMI, Dell includes that dongle in the box. You, you might not wanna use a dongle, but at least you don't have to pay for it. The display connection for my MacBook Pro to get USB-A and HDMI, it costs 60 bucks to do the same thing. This just came in the box. Thank you. And the last thing that I wanna talk about today is much like the XPS 15, this laptop looks incredible. I'm a pretty simple person. I don't really care for all of the RGB that goes around in the computer scene. I don't like that. I don't like flashiness. I'm also a professional office worker. I have to be able to take this into meetings and be taken seriously. I love the aluminum look of the outer chassis. I think it contrasts well with the black carbon fiber. The slim design and the bezels make this look futuristic without needing to have graphics or lights or fog machines built into it. It just, this looks like a high quality professional device that you won't get laughed at at a meeting for having. And as an adult, as an adult, that is important. And I just like that in a device that I spent so much money on. Much like the MacBook looks fantastic and very professional, I think Dell's done a great job making this match that aesthetic in their own way. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Would I recommend the Dell XPS 17? Absolutely, yes, absolutely, I recommend this computer. So long as you buy it from a place that will let you return it if you do have a problem with the trackpad. That's the one, that's the one thing, you have to protect yourself. This computer is powerful, it's sleek, it's not unwieldy, and it works well as both a laptop, but also as a desktop replacement if you need one computer to do both. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with this. And now I, now Gary, Gary, you've got a really tough choice in front of you because I've got to decide if I'm going to fully replace my MacBook with this. It's going to be tough. And that's a thought for another video. Maybe we'll do like a Mac versus Windows comparison where we then like the fate of the computing environment is at hand. That was very nerdy. And if you're considering a Dell laptop and you don't know whether to get the XPS 15 or the XPS 17, here's my video comparing the two and it'll help you work through my thoughts on each. Click right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.